Hey, what is going on, truth lovers? And welcome back to the eternal search for the courtroom. <clears throat> Man, I swear, I've never felt like I've successfully had hay fever at any point in my life, but uh, something feels a bit different today. Let's, uh, uh, <clears throat> let's hope it's just a cold, huh? Ah, uh, oh, deduction time. Okay. Whew. And of course, for maximum dominance, if I do need to sneeze, it'll be directly into the microphone. Hoo yeah! Yeah, let's go. Very well then. Let us start once more from the beginning. Ugh, oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magnificent bollocks. Let's go. Course correction. Hold it. Okay, so from what I remember, the ratio was roughly half and half. So it's all good until we get to a question mark. Uh, if we look at a court record, we have only got one thing. Because the armband never counts. I think in the three Phoenix Wright games I played, I only used the armband once. And that was towards right at the end of one of the other games. And it was like the judge asks you the question in a weirdly worded way, where like the only answer could be you're almost like staking your life as a lawyer on it, which is why you had to use that sort of gimmick. But uh, yeah, just that saw, I'd imagine. No, not saw, it's for a music box. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so we can just mash through all this. No, we better not mash. We need to make sure we know. Uh, what we're going to be presenting, but we can slowly do a little mash. Oh, it's not even let me quick mash. Okay. Okay, so why did he come to the shop? Follow the pickpocket, but that's a lie. But this is a. Uh... What did he say? It was a circus thing. Staff recruitment flyer. Okay, so it's not that. So, by his reasoning, this guy came here in order to apply for a job so he could dig down through the floor. I forgot how ridiculous his reasoning was last episode. Yes, in an attempt to tunnel into the sewers to gain access to the money in the vault of the bank across the road. God damn, that was long-winded. But he wouldn't get very far with a broken shovel, would he? Yeah, the guy was just screaming like, this is insanity, while Sholmes was talking. Nope, I think it's fair to say his motives lie elsewhere. The question is where, what did bring him here at this particular point in time? Okay. What? What is that? Oh, look at all the scribble notes on the back of the flyer here. That's blatantly it, but let's just see what it is. I don't believe it. What is it? Listen to what it says. Gina Lestrade. Oh, yo, five foot two, green cap. Oh, so he's just identified her. Grubby white shirt, blue satchel, ragged. It's a detailed description of her. Yeah. Goodness. There's even a sketch of her, hat and all. Although if he showed it to her, she'd fire that smoke grenade launcher in his face for sure. And look, the details of this shop has been written down here too. Uh, so maybe he did go on the hunt for her and he's been doing it for a while and he's just caught a glimpse of her. Uh, okay, redemption deadline, 15th of April. Oh no, so he knew very well she would be here exactly today. Which is today's day. Why would he have all of that info scrawled on the back of that piece of paper? Could it be from the Irishman? Ah, so you see, if we had just presented this... Maybe because it was, uh, what did it say before? Like scribbled notes. It wouldn't have allowed it. But now, we shatter reality. Yeah, what brought you to this shop in the first place? Is the info about her? Quite so, my dear fellow. It would appear that the writing and sketch on the reverse of the flyer pertain to the pickpocket and to his pawn brokery here. Ah! Wrap it up. You originally told us. 
that you had merely given chase after her after she stole the redemption ticket from you. But that, sir, is a thinly veiled lie. Wrap it up. Click it forwards. It's the info on the back of the fly that led you here today, by which I mean... Here to win the bank's pawn brokery and today the redemption deadline of that overcoat. Oh man, he's getting angry. So, you waited outside for the young girl matching the description you have written down to arrive. Huh! And you have gone to some lengths to hide the reason for your pursuit of her. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. <gasps> that the cane which you unwittingly clutch to your person exhibits an incontrovertible contradiction. What utter rot! I've had this cane for years! A.G. Is that his name? The contradiction of which I speak is, of course, the missing ferial. Oh, yo, that, we read all that before. Damn. It's hard to know when it um, blends in because you can't quick mash this stuff. Uh, what's a ferial? It's the metal cap commonly found on the end of a cane. You may have said this before, right? Ah, the bit that makes the nice clacking sound on the pavement. Yes, exactly. And if he is right, it appears to be missing on this cane. But it doesn't actually look broken, does it? No, it doesn't. Though the gentleman certainly did recoil when he identified the cane as suspicious. It does have AG on it. What was this guy's name again? In other words, there's some secret about the cane. Ah, Benedict. That's not an A or a G. But he'd rather we don't know. Okay. Not on the back, is it? Ah, oh, sometimes they try and twist it. You never know. AG. Initialing. We probably don't need to examine this. This is probably self-explanatory, but you never know. Look here. There are some letters on the handle. Ah, yes. Those must be initials, I think. In the West, it's customary for people to engrave their belongings with the first letters of their names. So Herlock Sholmes would be HS, you mean? That's right. And the initials on this cane, obviously... Oh. A? G? Why does it feel as though that's not quite right? Present it. Take, that. Take it. And put it in your bunghole. Uh, the contradiction of which I speak is, of course, the initialing. A most astute observation, wouldn't you say? <gasps> we are led to believe, sir, that your initials are EB. Eb. Yet, in a most possessive manner, you have in your grasp a cane bearing the initials. A.G. An incontrovertible contradiction indeed, would you not agree? No, you're, you're wrong. This cane isn't. You said before that you'd had that cane for years. Grr. Use the sword quick, so don't try and tell us you just borrowed it from a friend or found it in a park. In short... Though you hold yourself to be a gentleman, you have withheld your true name. Ah, okay. Wow, what keeps ripping? Is that another... I think I thought it was around the armpit last time, but I don't actually know. Maybe it's the piece of paper in his hand that keeps ripping. You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? I... well, I... And in your recoil... Ah, uh, yes. And then we'll just go to the desk now. Uh, blah, 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 the rod. Let's go, let's go. Uh, is it? The handle which you evidently would like to conceal is the key to... Something, this riddle. Understanding. Let's consider the bare bones of what's happened here. She redeemed that fine-looking overcoat. And now a mysterious man has appeared introducing himself with a fake name and claiming the overcoat belongs to him. But we know that he actually identified her from a written description, which suggests that everything else he's told us is untrue. Okay, so what we need to do here is somehow prove that the overcoat cannot possibly belong to him. 
Okay, that's a... He's gone for the advancing guard. Ah, the rips! It was the shoulder! Splits him! Oh, the seam on the shoulder there is coming apart! Look! So it is! Do you know, a moment ago when he was surprised by something that was said, I thought I heard him make a rather strange noise. It sounded a bit like a big fart. But now I think it was probably the sound of this seam ripping open. If you look closely, it does seem to be a very tight fit. The sleeves are stretched and bursting, and he wouldn't have a hope of fastening it at the front. If he were to run around in it, I'm sure the whole thing would fall apart. That would be hilarious. Just go for a jog and your suit just falls off. What? Hmm, that I like to see. Sorry. So, how can we make him run around? She's really given this some thought. Uh, oh yeah, present it, of course. Split team has shattered reality. The split seam, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding this riddle, you see. Yeah! Yes, because the overcoat is rather obviously a poor fit. Having forced it over your broad shoulders, the seam is already breaking apart. My suspicions were aroused from the outset. 180 click, I like it. When you so boldly lied about your name and so boldly waylaid this pickpocket. Hurrah! This catalogue of untruths has all been for one very specific purpose. Wrap it up, get it wrong. To steal the article that the young girl redeemed from him. Ah, oh, that might be right, actually. Hurrah! Why did he pirouette death scream? But what really irks me is this. The considerable crime I initially imagined has been considerably curtailed. Damn it, we were so close to the courtroom! To abscond with a redeemed item. Uh, so what's that, one of two or three? No, it's just a two-part this time, I think. We should probably get a little save here. Yeah. Onwards! Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For we must expose the details of this elaborate crime you have in the planning. This is utterly absurd! <laughs> you suggest that I, a gentleman, designed a wheeze to filch some tawdry article of pawnage? Ownage? Have you forgotten that I redeemed the article in the proper manner using the watchword? <laughs> Why is he like in your face while dancing? Had I not been the one to deposit it in the first place, how could I possibly have known the relevant details, n'est-ce pas? Oh, but the watchword can be discovered, as you are only too well aware. Okay, he didn't like that. Ah, oh, because he's looked at the book. Ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? Okay, we probably match this. Uh, oh, maybe not, actually. Let's consider how one might come to learn a secret watchword leading to the property of another. The method is revealed. No, not the council notice. You stupid idiot. It's the giant book next to it. Surely. The direction of the deduction must change rather dramatically now, I think. Yeah, no more talk of tunneling into the shoot sewers. Which is a pity because it all sounded rather exciting. Anyway. You can't deny that this mysterious gentleman did know the watchword. Yes, Professor. If you didn't know that word, he would never allow you to redeem the article. Or, looking at it another way, if you did know that word, he would allow you to redeem the article whether it was yours or not. Ah, very flawed system there. Like, you're right, mate. Uh, I've worked all month from here for my favourite jacket that I pawned and almost couldn't afford it back to get back. But, uh... Whew. Yeah, hope you well, mate. It's been a long month. Professor. And it's like, oh, you must be some imposter. I gave that away three days ago. You did what? So the question is, could this gentleman have found the watchword out somehow? Of course. What? The book isn't... 
No! Not like this! No clipped. Okay, I was wrong. Look at this. Ah, it appears to be a memo that he scribbled to himself. Let's see, what does it say? Oh, Professor. Oh, so would he have just gone through a whole list of words that he had memorised if it wasn't Professor? He got lucky the first time, I guess. He must make a note of the watchwords his customers give him right before their eyes. No, so if he knew what was written on there before, then he'd know what the new word was. And in an alarmingly clear script as well. Why, well, that's not cool. Oh dear, I, I don't know where to look. Who knows what other secrets I might see. We better use it. Take, Take it. Notelet. Yeah, man, and I think we've only got one or two left after this, which is nice. The method is resil <clears throat> revealed by the notelet on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. Ah, good time for hydration there. Yes, the broker here follows the same procedure whenever a customer comes to redeem an article. <clears throat> he asks the customer for the watchword and notes down the response uttered on a notelet he has to hand. <clears throat> then he consults his ledger and confirms whether or not the watchword matches that of the article in question. I would expect nothing less of a diligent pawnbroker. But his diligence clearly has its disadvantages. What are you talking about? It is increasingly apparent that you were present. <clears throat> oh man. In this shop before your accusation against her. Yep, thought it might be something like that. In all likelihood, you followed her inside and then observed her talking to him. When the diligent broker made a note of the watchword, as is his common practice, you observed him writing the word professor on the note that beside the ledger. <gasps> and that, sir, uh, was the master plan you devised to steal the pawned article from the young lady. Mm. Master plan! Which brings us at last to the final chapter of this lurid scheme. Why would you go to such lengths to redeem that particular article from this pawnbroker? Are you quite serious? For an ill-fitting overcoat hardly seems to justify the effort, much less a worthless music box, box disc. <sighs> um, but naturally you had very good reason to make them yours, didn't you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, this picture postcard is wrong. The articles we're talking about are the overcoat and the music box disc that was in one of the pockets. Which according to him isn't even worth a penny. And yet this man went to such lengths to steal them. Why? I wonder if perhaps we already have the evidence we need to explain it. Could we? Really? Better have a thorough look. Okay, just in case. Because we really don't have many items, do we? Um, damn it. Oh, we've only got this. This is bad. Oh, we haven't actually examined this. What? Okay. Silly me. And I'm pretty sure that was the Irish fella's name. Look at all the little bumps on the disc. They're so tiny. Yes, the protrusions are all called pins and they pluck the teeth of the comb to make notes. And just on the edge, there's a small amount of blood. Yeah, the blood of the mysterious geezer. When she tried to grab the disc from him, the pin scratched his fingers, it seems. Like when you're grating some daikon radish and accidentally catch your finger. You mean cheese? Ouch, just thinking about me hurts. Just thinking about it hurts and puts me off eating radish. For my gilded. Oh, there's a little scrap of paper stuck onto the reverse side of the disc. Look. Man, 
Always check your evidence. Like if you only had one piece. And, and a scribbled word or two. It looks like somebody's name. For McGilded. M McGilded? It couldn't be. But it is. A name I shall never forget for as long as I live. Good old Irishman. But why? Why is his name on this? Okay. So then, of course... Well, we can't actually present this, though, can we? Take that! Okay, we... Ah, okay. So, because he was suggesting a piece of evidence, and we had something to counteract it, we don't need to do the 360 examining his hat and all that. Cool. Nice. Uh, you see, this music box disc tells us all we need to know. What's that on the back? It reads, Former Gilded. Hurrah! And that is not your name, good sir. Ah, the unfortunate philanthropist who perished in uncurious circumstances at the Old Bailey two months ago. A prominent man, though his loan mongering demonstrated a distinct lack of scruples. So, you're an associate of his, are you? Or perhaps a subordinate? Or maybe just one of the geezers who owed him money. Uh, he was a man of unusually small stature. In fact, he was precisely the right size for that overcoat that you've squeezed yourself into. Ugh. Oh yeah, because uh, that Irish fella and the pickpocket girl were mates, weren't they? Don't know how strong that friendship was, but they definitely knew each other. Your true identity remains shrouded in mystery. But the final conclusion here is crystal clear. The reason you came to this pawn brokery today. Wrap it up. Just to double get it wrong. Oh, maybe not. Was to retrieve an article left behind by the late Irishman. Yeah, if they've done it together, it's going to be right. <laughs> Boom. We did it. Very nice. First try, club. Solved. Next. Deduction complete. Elementary. Hey, nice. I love wrapping those up within one episode. Well, well. Not a name I expected to hear in these circumstances. Okay. I'm afraid there's something very troubling on my mind. Yeah, I mean, if, if he died in a bus fire just after he was proved innocent. <sighs> yeah, we, we should have known we wouldn't be seeing the end of that. Pray tell. Well, according to what he told us earlier, today was the final day on which the coat could have been redeemed, was it not? Oh, so he was hoping to get it without buying it. Uh, yes, that is correct. Today would be precisely two months since it was first deposited. Well, today is 15th of April, so two months ago today. Would have been 15 February, sir. That's right. It's all carefully recorded in my ledger. Deposited at 10.30pm, I see. What? But, but that suggests... Oh, is this going to make out like he's alive? Yes, 15 February is precisely on the day in which the omnibus murder took place. Okay. And half past ten in the evening is precisely the time at which the terrible events were unfolding. So is, this, is that when this guy dropped the jacket off? Suggestive is not the word. It would seem the matter is entirely beyond coincidence. <clears throat> You are, of course, at liberty to make whatever outlandish deductions you choose, however. Oh, yo! I must insist you hand over the music box disc now. <gasps> it would be a terrible shame for you to return to your native land in a box. Damn. Uh, what do I do? Hmm. 
Oh, uh, guys, you know we gotta. You know we've gotta. You know we've gotta leave it there for today. Ah, bet some of you didn't see that coming. Hmm. Wondering what we should actually do here. We're gonna have to think hard about that. I, uh, I wouldn't have thought we'd be getting a game over if we do choose the wrong thing, but you uh, you never actually know, right? So what happens next time, guys? Is it bullet in the head or do we win? Uh, you'll have to find out next time. So if you like the looks of any of the suggested videos flooding your screen at this very second, then check some of them out and more importantly, let me know what you thought. Because you know, feedback is always delicious and extremely helpful. Uh, this is the final case of the game, even though we haven't made it around to getting into the courtroom yet. So if you've missed any of the playthrough so far the catch up but the main thing is guys as always i hope you're well thanks for watching and see you again next time